Welcome, folks. We have another surf report. The, the first full week of surfing in March of 2021. And I can already tell you that this is going to be one of the longer surf reports. There is so much energy, so many different facets of this thing to talk about. But I've never before seen such coherence across the spectrum of the different uh, oracles that we're going to be talking about. And um, so going into my stance, we got to get in our position and start surfing like this guy. Um, audio's got, I'm going into the red, but hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. I'm still making adjustments. And check out the new studio. Kaboom. What's up, everybody? And uh, here we are. It's just get, it's not finalized yet. This is the studio still has some more growing to do, but this is what I've been working on in my lifetime. It's not an I love me wall. That would be a Leo. I'm an Aquarian. I don't need recognition, but I want to welcome you in because I'm breaking out of my insecurities. Okay. I'm proud of where I've been. That big old rod up there in the middle. So right up there is from the F-15E that I used to fly. It's the gun. It's the 20 millimeter gun barrel. So let's get started with the summary slide. This is what I'm saying. Holy moly, highest congruency score I've ever seen. I'm getting my focus pointer out. And what we do. All right. So if you're new here, we're going to do two basic things. We want to give you the main influence. We're going to give you the main solution. So the behaviors to be able to maximize the energy. Um, this is going to be a longer one. So if you're not, if you don't have a lot of time, just take the little slider and slide it, you know, towards midway or 75% uh, to the right. And you want to get to the solution slide. You really want to know what the solution is. In my opinion, that's the most important thing. But I think the energies are really important, too, because you're going to see these in other people. And it makes the week, um, it makes seeing other people a little bit more predictable if you know what energies they're facing. So you can sort of predict their behavior, not to manipulate anybody, but it's it sure feels good to know what people are going through. And it feels good to have a better idea about what people are going to do. So no, not everybody's going to be doing the solution. Only you guys are going to be doing the solution because the they're going to most people are just going to be busy with the influences. They don't know. They don't have a heads up on what they're going to feel, and uh, they're just going to be reacting to it. But you guys, having seen the solution part of this, is going to be able to already know what behaviors to employ when you see those energies. I don't know if that makes sense. So in the astrology, we have some really interesting stuff here. And I guarantee you, there's some stuff that you're seeing here that you won't see anywhere else. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, pretty sure. We have a super mind with Mercury and Jupiter, both parts of the mind. We have Uranus square Saturn. Um, that one is very, fairly consistent. We've seen that for a while. And this though last remaining square for a while, you'll see some other squares, but those, that's for the moon. The moon transits fairly quickly. We're talking about some significant um, squares that's, that hang around for a while. And the only one you got is Uranus square Saturn. And this represents um, change versus the way things have always been. Well, if you, if you catapult over here to the dream bot, which is the collective unconscious, it's really interesting because you've got this bipolar, you know, the modes you've got familiar on the one hand and then upheaval on the other hand. And then with the dream bot, there's, I guess this circle, this blue circle could have uh, dipped out a little bit past that. Sorry. Um, because there's a location thing in there that doesn't really apply per se to the others, but then you get to the I Ching. When we toss these coins, we got what's called mutual attraction. No, it's not really all romance and stuff. Yeah, it can be. But we're talking about opposites. And we have we have multiple opposites here. We have Mercury and Jupiter. We have Uranus and Saturn. We have all sorts of stuff that, um, that employ the combining or the attraction of opposite ends. And so we're going to be, we're looking at, 
when all this is put together like it is, they're overlapped with each other. And we're looking at ex extremes, emotional extremes, mental extremes. We're looking at mood extremes. And we're also looking at ideology extremes as if we haven't seen that already. This week is going to be extra in both of those regards or all those regards. And as a result, you'll start to see people with cognitive dissonance. Now, I know the people who the listeners who know what cognitive dissonance is. Yes, I realize that we see this every day. Yes. But when the psyche is presented with two um, contradictory stimuli, it will try to attempt to discredit one side and choose another for familiarity or for just, you know, peace of mind. Well, when we do that, we slice off half of reality or a third of reality or whatever that percentage is that you're slicing away just because your, your mind has a problem with holding both truths at the same time. So it tends to go to one side. And when you do that, you get ideologically one-sided <laughs> by nature. So, but that's the influence this week is extremes. You're going to see people feeling the extremes, thinking the extremes. And then as a result, cognitive dissonance plays out and people get really entrenched. You might see escalation. You might see conflict. I know there's not a lot of conflict in the stars finally, but I think if I've got this right, you're going to actually see a little bit more, um, just a little bit more irritation this week. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the dream bot. Hit the like button, especially if my audio is okay. If you like the flange, then uh, make sure you put a comment down below. I appreciate everybody's comments below, including the ones that didn't like the audio levels. But um, I'm, I'm still, I've got the new audio card, new studio equipment. So we're getting, I'm just really finessing those. So I want to make sure that the audio is still good. I did make quite a few changes. So here's the dream bot. And if you haven't subscribed yet, if you're new here, make sure you hit that before you forget. All right, here we go. Um, where is this? So we got the reds and this is just in the middle and it's familiar. We even have the word familiar at the bottom. This is what we've known. And you know, it's just blah. It's gray. It's, it's just, you know, normal. And then we have upheaval. That's the blue arrows. And this is shred and concerned and distracted and all that stuff. So we have those two battling it out and it's fairly equal in terms of um, levels. And then you have this weird one with location nearby underground visit, nature, nature is a place too. universe is a place. Uh, yeah. Universe. So I don't know. To, I don't know how to, what to think about that. Maybe it might be the 3d reality. Maybe that's, um, familiar versus upheaval in terms of locations that we know or the world that we know, who knows? I don't, I don't, uh, care to spend a whole lot of time on that because we got plenty to talk about in the astrology really in our overview thing. And if you haven't noticed already, I've really pared down the alignments and I like this better because it's cleaner. We had a lot of the minor alignments that we rarely talk about the semi sextiles and stuff. Yeah. Those, those can be important, but when you've got squares all over the place and trines, you got to talk about the major ones first. And I only have so much time to put into these, you know, so really the only thing to talk about up here is that Mars is going into Gemini and that's going to have a certain feeling. We'll talk about that when we see the chart and then it's fairly clean. I know we still have, we have that super mind here that goes exact on the fourth, which is Mercury and Jupiter. We'll talk about all about that. That's in Aquarius. And other than that, you've got that decayed out um, square, but you can see that's red, this red line here is the square Saturn and Uranus. And it just it seems like it goes on for eternity. You're just going to get numbed out to it, folks. But it's always there. It's like change versus the same. Change versus the same. Change. Blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. Ready? 
Thursday, the 4th of March. Oh boy, there's so much here. And um, I haven't even talked about, I'm not even putting out all of it on here on this first slide because we got other stuff to talk about in the subsequent slides. But the biggest news, I think, at least right now, is this supermoon. It goes exact on the 4th. It's Mercury and Jupiter. And if you can see down here in the declination, you have to really zoom in, but they're parallel in uh, declination. And so what that means is they're conjunct longitudinally and laterally. And so, holy cow, the lower part of the mind, the Mercury, more of the learning, the adaptable part, and then the higher wisdom and philosophy part and the PhD level mind, that's the Jupiter, they're together. They're right there together in the same speck of sky. It, and it's in Aquarius, in an air sign, the mental sign of Aquarian with knowledge. It is super mind. It is revolutionary thought. It's wisdom in communication. Look at, you've got the wisdom of Jupiter, which is optimistic and positive. And then you've got the communication planet of Mercury. So listen to yourself communicating to others. You'll give yourself uh, wisdom and insight about what you need to be doing. Just talk to other people. That's, that's the uh, concept there. It doesn't really matter what, just communicate to others and then listen to the wisdom that comes out of your mouth. It's a super mind all week, folks. And even if you're not an Aquarian, but especially if you are fantastic and, um, it's very favorable for mental states. Now I'm, you know, if you're into human design, that's an example of we need to get out of our minds. And, you know, there's a lot of truth to that, but there's exceptions. And this is a definitely exception. Um, mind is now you could be old habits, mold, old mental habits that could really destroy you this week. So you need to watch out and not be in habit mind. We need to be conscious. We need to be aware because those gifts are there. The influence is, is there. All right. So we wanted to spend some time there. Then we have a developing interesting influence here. And it's um, sun is going to head into Neptune. They're going to go conjunct. And it's their declination is parallel as well. So what that means is we're going to see a super dreamer, a super Neptune. We're going to also see a, right now, a combust, a combust Neptune. So your dreams are sort of winding down for a while as the sun approaches. We're six degrees away. So a lot of you who are dreamers, you're still going to get those dreams. Might just be a little bit dulled or mundane. Now it still is in Pisces. So dreams are very dreamy and very mystical and very profound and um, connected to everything, etc. More more of a uh, spiritual in nature or should be, or could be, if you interpret that, I would interpret your dreams or, and if you haven't been, you should have been, but I would interpret your dreams now with more of a spiritual approach because Neptune and Pisces, these are, it's sort of a whole spiritual orientation, if you will, the Pisces is, and you got the part of fortune together in this little time spec um, by the fifth it will probably be out of there but you also have the approaching venus so a lot happening in pisces it's a big dreamy influence but it's also spiritual and it may want you to sacrifice a lot of yourself it doesn't mean you have to doesn't mean you can't but just recognize that influence is going to be there and then we have Mars going into freshly into Gemini. Remember what Mars was doing in Taurus He's sort of occasionally on one knee, sort of getting out of breath a lot, sort of weakened ish. He's not, now he's back up, he's standing up and now he's really adaptable. And this is a fresh energy in Gemini, especially as I'm um, coming out of Taurus. And so he's springing to life very, especially that first week or two, really getting back up and, and getting started and thinking a lot more and being adaptable and putting that energy in a, in a lot of different places. So very favorable there. Uh, he's got a while until the North Node. 
Then Friday the 5th, as we go further, we can see the sun going in Neptune. And um, let me know if I'm just interested and see if you can, if you guys can hear a dog barking right now, um, give me the level, like the, from zero to 10, 10 being, I can totally hear it. Like it's right next to the microphone. If you can give me the level, because there's no way for me to turn that dog off and I'm hoping, hopefully you can't hear it, but I need to know that too. Thanks everybody. Um, and then he's probably going to be going for quite a while. Um, sun and Neptune getting closer. This is called combust because they're on the path on the same declination and they're headed or the sun is headed towards Neptune. Part of fortune's pretty much beyond this now and is, uh, is on his way. Well, that, that part, that point in the sky. Yes. Yes. I see this. There's a lot more squares here. This is the moon over the South node and it's, um, fiery discontent because you've got the moon is the emotional stuff. They're this is a fire sign and it's squared over to a water sign. And so those two don't really mix all that well. And you've got the sun over here in Pisces and it doesn't real mesh well, mesh very well with the fiery Sagittarius moon. So fiery emotions and they might be really past oriented. Well, by their very nature, most emotions are from the past. So those past emotions get even stronger unfortunately, makes you feel a little bit unbalanced and it goes back to those extremes. This is one of those extremes, one way or the other, that you're going to feel swayed by. Okay. The other way is that Mars in Gemini, that's going to make, that's going to make it feel like you're swinging over to the Yang side. This may feel like you're going over to the Yang side too, because emotions from the past maybe perhaps conflicted, might feel irritated and angry, perhaps. You don't have to. I'm not hopefully creating your reality. Just something to look out for. Saturday, the 6th. Now, here's the alignment is here all week, or uh, it really starts in earnest here. So you've got the Uranus square to Saturn, and Saturn has the trine over to Mars. So... Um, we have the ability to it's sort of, it's sort of connected back to the change that's happening. So it's the change versus the same. And I mean, what we've always known, the status quo foundation government Uranus has a way of pressurizing change or affecting change of that status quo. And then that influence is an outlet over to Mars in adaptable Gemini. So there's an ability ultimately to get the change through. Finally, it's not just, it's not just a pressure cooker that builds, 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 and then it pops at some point. Um, this one actually has an outlet now with, with Mars freshly in Gemini and wants to do stuff now. Then we have Sunday and Venus now within the orb of the sun. So it's, it's, and Venus is in orb with the Neptune. So we have all three planets together. That's making for now relationships come into this alignment is very harmonious. And, um, you know, ego likes to have that peace of mind and, and peace within and peace with your, uh, closest relatives and that sort of stuff. But if you can imagine all three of these archetypes together as one, it's going to be very, very dulled in terms of discontent. And that's good. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to feel very harmonizing or it should, and, and it should be, it, sh it could be very dreamy, and, but it could be a spiritual connection with others. So look for that as well. We're, we're within, I was wanting to say within or between, Venus and Neptune, but now we're only three degrees away from Sun and Neptune, which means that the dream, dreamy part of this is sort of getting washed out and we're combust. So it's, it's going to get weaker and weaker and weaker as it gets closer to the Sun. And then as it gets Kazemi, 
boom, you're going to have this explosion within 17 minutes of, of uh, the sun. Boom. Massive dreaminess or fantasy. And um, it could be very magical. It could be very spiritual in nature. All right. Now, this one's a key one. Here's some opposites for you. And the opposites are important because remember what we do is we plot the influence in the calculator to get the solution. So this is the plot. This is, we're going to come back to this later. And these are two points in the sky. This is the black moon Lilith, the true black moon Lilith, and the part of fortune. They're two, they're not really planets, but we plot them here because they're very meaningful. Part of fortune is just that, offering good fortune, offering how it should be. Things are smooth, easy, fortunate, lucky, spontaneously synchronistic. That's the word I was wanting. And then Black Moon Lilith is quite the opposite. It's, um, um, oh crap, how did that go bad? And I'm like, um, I didn't see that coming. Not like a Uranus thing, but you know that there's a, probably a problem ahead by the feeling that's associated with it ahead of time, just like the part of fortune on the opposite side. So you got like arguably like death and luck or uh, bad luck and good luck, you know? Those are your opposites in the um, Aries sector of the Zodiac. And that happens on the 7th. I think there's some some other things out in the 3D reality for the 7th, but I got to I gotta keep moving or else it's going to be forever. Monday the 8th. We're getting closer, two degrees away from Kazemi and Venus also approaching closer. And then we've got these opposites. I'm sorry, these, these are opposites, the Saturn and Uranus. And just that, that layout of ability to push out the change. And it's sort of, um, uh, do I want to do the foreshadowing? No, no, we'll, we'll keep it the same. Tuesday the 9th. Um, not much more to see here. The moon's making some nice, easy trines over to Mars. Mars still has a ways to go for the North Node. We're only one degree now from Kazemi. So dreams are really getting dulled now. Venus is um, getting closer to the sun, four degrees away. So it too is sort of weakening, but still harmonious, still so, uh, self, extra self-sacrificing. That's a nice harmonious thing, as long as it's not too extreme, but nice for your relationships. And so relationships, even though your Neptune and Venus are both getting dulled as both get closer to the sun, it's the sea influence is still there. It's not like it's gone completely. And it's not like it gets destroyed either. Now, our last day of our surf, we have Neptune, Kazemi. And so these are mega dreams. And look at uh, there's hardly anything else here. You still do have the super mind, and now it's really weak, and now the emotions are inside of that um, that super mind, and that's okay. You just have to know what you're looking looking at. You have to be aware not only of your thoughts. Now you got to be aware of your thoughts and emotion, and they do relate to each other. Emotions cause mind to overreact. And then your mind causes emotions to feel. Where your mind goes, body follows. Body follows with the feelings associated with emotions. All right. So, but but look, how, look how clean the sky is. Finally. Now, one more thing that I didn't, I didn't, I, I should have uh, uh, told you this a little bit earlier, but since this is our last day, it still rings true. Wherever the sun is at the maximum of that, um, period of time. So in the daytime, the sun is above you. And when it's at its highest peak, all of the planets and points, except for South Node, are with it. And so what this does in a grand scheme is produces even more extreme of where the sun already is. So the sun is, um, in this example, in 12 o'clock in Arkansas, it makes the yang side of the daytime, even more daytime, the yang, even more yang, it's wherever the sun is, and then vice versa. So at night, the sun's at the very bottom is going to be down here. And this makes 
uh, even more um, introverted. So at the bottom of the chart, if it, all the planets down here, these are more introverted. And, but the majority, the ones that are above the horizon, these make the influence a little bit more extroverted. So during the day, people should be feeling more extroverted than usual because of all these planets above. And then deeply at night, you're going to feel extra um, introverted. You're going to go through those swings. Even, even the people who are the most extroverted, they'll feel even more extroverted during this time and more of the opposite at the other 12 hours of the day. So I hope that wasn't confusing, but it's really important when you've got this um, weighted, it's heavily weighted around the sun and the sun is the cent center theme. Also, one last thing, because Venus and sun are so close together, it's washed out. You're not going to see the bringer of the light. You're not going to see Venus bringing up the sun just because it's washed out by the, uh, it's just too close to the sun to see it. And that's it. That's for the daily astrology. You guys exhausted yet? And that's um, already 26 minutes. Um, and I didn't even cover everything. I'm sure I missed a few things. All right. I Ching reading. This is for that same week, the 4th to the 10th. This is the influence. The I Ching says hexagram 31, which is the lake over mountain. We have one change line. So that produces a different hexagram for the solution. And we have mutual attraction. We already saw the opposites in all of astrology and the dream bot. Now we see it in the I Ching. The attraction of opposites is a powerful and fundamental force, especially that of a mutual attraction in the beginning stages. They talk about magnetic attraction between two people, but they're more talking about the archetypes, masculine and feminine, the extreme coming together. That's just a metaphor for what's happening at the grand scale, the yin and the yang, the sun and the moon. They, even though we don't have a new moon or a full moon this period, but it's in the grand influence. Assertive is able to defer to the receptive. There's another archetype. Um, and then, let's see, either way, remaining open to the forces of attraction brings good fortune. And closing yourself off shuts them down. Learn to yield to the tugs and pulls of the heart. And um, I put down here that, yeah, it could be the heart or it could be following your intuition or your divinity. If you're praying, listening to your still voice or in human design, looking for your inner authority, making sure that comes into play. I need to read the change line and that's line one. This is a weird one. In the safety of one's bed, one wiggles, wiggles one's toes. Does this mean this person is about to undertake a long journey? No one knows. The situation is of little importance. So what that says to me is, we take that to our big contradictory influence, the yin and the yang, is doesn't mean that you have to behave. It just means that it's going to be probably hard not to behave but we don't know. We have to check in with our inner authority in order to know if this influence is actionable, right? So you might be, don't be caught in the cognitive dissonance. Well, we're not even to the solution yet. And I'm telling you a part of the solution, which is watch out for di cognitive dissonance. Don't throw out one thing just because your mind needs to just glom on to the right solution. Uh, just be aware of that. All right, folks, here's the solution. Let's get right to it. 49, you put that change line in, you get hexagram 49, lake over fire. Revolution. Do you remember what revolution was? Do you remember hearing about that in these surf reports? That was the second week in January, 2021, but it was an influence. Remember that discussion? Revolution as an influence but we're not supposed to be doing anything about it. Well, guess what? This is all reversed. Now we get the revolution as the solution. Holy crap. It's not me calling for a revolution. In fact, probably shouldn't even be saying this. 
It's not me. This is the divination that's telling us this. This hexagram refers to a time in the cycle of human affairs when things are stirring up and the hint of dramatic change is in the air. I am tired of stagnant air. I'm tired of stagnant nothingness. I'm tired of nothing burgers. And maybe this is the week that it all breaks out. But just to be sure, I'm not calling for that. And I'm calling for an individual revolution. Okay. And I have reason to believe that. So just hang on here. It must begin at the right moment. Gather support from a broad base of people. Be guided by sincere and capable leaders. And most important of all, address a real need. Now everybody knows there's a real freaking need for change. Revolutionary change ushers in a period when chaos arises from order. Interesting. Let's remember that not all order is good and not all chaos is bad. Ooh, I like that. Chaos is often an integral part of the way things evolve. This, re this hexagram reminds us to have the courage. Courage. That's a big word in our solution. Courage. To radically change and renew the way we bring ourselves to life. In this way, you can channel chaos to your cause and unleash a new power on behalf of the good. If engaging in a negotiation, change the rules. If composing a piece of music, add the unexpected. If courting a lover, dare to be unconventional. So what I did was, because remember we saw this as an influence, I was wondering what was happening in the sky from 1-7, January 7th through the 13th. Well, it was right after the uh, the false flag at um, the Capitol, right? So, but um, that week I pulled in the main surf energy from that week and look what you have. You have Uranus and uh, Mars, the rebel. This is the rebel. And you saw, you saw the rebel at play in the grand scale. Um, but all that was squared off to, well, all this stuff, but especially Saturn. So this is where it, st it started. And that was mega square energy. Well, now, what's the difference now? Well, Mars, remember Mar Mars was um, past Uranus to get the change, get the directions, to get the plan. Well, he was weakened all the way through Taurus. And, and now in, this is a now chart, the 10th, in Gemini. So he's adaptable. He's ready to go. He's just hopped up on his two feet. And now easy energy for Saturn. And this this pressure cooker is where it's been there for quite a while, finally has an outlet and it's Mars. And this is what the revolution is. In my opinion, this revolution is catalyzed by Mars going into Gemini because it creates the outlet to the change that was invoked to Saturn. So I hope I said that well to, to an under uh, satisfactory level. Continuing on. So remember what I, I told you? I said the epitome of the opposites was, was exemplified by Part of Fortune and Black Moon Lilith. And so I took that speck of sky. And I know there's more opposites, okay? But I thought this epitomized it even more. And I put this into our calculator. So we got hexagram 42 and we also had Pisces. And I, I put the wrong, I put the wrong hexagram in there. I just noticed that. So that one is the gate of growth, the gate of growth and it's Aries. This is the gate of maximizing the potential of beginnings through expansion. Isn't that amazing? This is also the gate of bringing things to a close so that the next step can be taken. The, the power to complete a cycle is the heart of growth process. Hey, sorry guys that I had the wrong one in there, but this makes a lot of sense. Um, it talks about the spleen. The abstract being must be absorbed in the experience of the now in order to reflect on the experience later. The potential of growth 
is its power to mature through the completion of each cycle. So perhaps what it's saying is that these extremes in the influence that we're going to see is part of need, need closure, but part of the cycle. All right, so now it's time to look at the solution slide. So this, this is just a little model that I made to give you an idea for what people are going to be feeling back and forth. And these extremes, these extremes don't feel good. And so what, what do we do? Um, we go seek a doctor and they give us a medication to give us, to make us not so extreme anymore. Well, this model was created. It's called IM2. It's called Inspirational Achievement Model. And um, although I haven't created the, the model yet for public display, it, it shows you how to take these extremes that you're going to feel this week and translate them into higher creativity, higher life satisfaction, more happiness, better relationships, etc. Not fearing the extremes, but knowing how to navigate them. All right. So let's get into the, the solution slide. Not too bad, 36 minutes. And now, so we have the extremes and the cognitive dissonance that you're expecting out in the world and expecting the influence of just the extremes of both sides, the contra contradictory messages. Your mind, expect your mind to try to go to cognitive dissonance and, and slice off one half of this picture so that your mind feels better and more in control. Resist that urge and see that both your word both is the answer for the extremes. Now on the solution slide, we have to, we have an error. So the gate 40, we have to just ignore that part. And we have the I Ching 49 revolution. And what did we have? We had the gate of growth, I believe. The 42. Yeah, the gate of growth in, in Aries for the rave. And then we had sidereal Aries which is direct, transparent, and vigorous. So it all comes down to this, this big overlap here. The best week that you can make is following this guidance here, in my opinion. This is the triangulation. Clarity motivates. That's that super mind. I'm going to include the influence of Jupiter and Merc Mercury in this. Clarity. Don't Get into habits, habitual thinking. Be conscious, be aware. Be aware of the full magnitude of your mind and expand out your awareness of thoughts. Revolution springs into the air. I, I don't think we're, we're to follow anyone particular. This is an individual revolution. But you have to follow the rules of nature according to the re revolution, universal truths and inner values. Use the Aries confidence Vigor, intensity, and passion. Be your true effing self. That's the Aries way. That's the best the Aries can be. Not selfish, but true to yourself. Be the best you that you can be. But without the pressure of being that. Just be you. Just be the best you. No apologies to anyone when you're living your authenticity. Have courage to change and don't expect anyone to follow. That's a key one. How many of us make all these big changes and then start y yipping at everyone else to, why aren't, why aren't you changing too? Or making fun of, if you stop drinking because you don't want to be an alcoholic anymore and then you start seeing, you start judging everyone else for drinking. Why are they drinking? Uh, it's horrible for you. So watch out for that. This is a, this is a you revolution. Base your actions from values rather than fear. Look for your fear-based habits. Either eliminate them or change them to value-based habits. This is, liber is what I'm calling Liberation Week for anyone who claims it. Learn to emulate the Aries warrior. Use your courage, use your passion, and gain intensity for what you know is right. And if you can, you can include in there, not right or wrong, but both <laughs> in intensity for both solving for both um passionate about making sure that we can that humanity can live with both 
not just both, but all. There's all different sides, also different facets. I guess I might be sounding like uh, uh, Wilbur. Uh, what's his first name? Will last name Wilbur, Doctor, and uh, integral theory. That he's just integrate everything together. And why do we have to kick out certain parts and pieces? Why do we need special interest in a land that should be free? Why? Why can't we just be, your only law should just be don't hurt one another. Just the basic rule. You can do anything you want, just don't hurt anybody. Uh, so anyway, but I don't think we should be worried about other folks this week. I think we should be using this energy to revolutionize your own life. And that's it. Any questions, comments below? I'm so, I had planned I am. I have never been this busy, and I I appreciate everybody coming in to see me. I love talking with all of you. I I have yet to meet anyone that's that's anything less than just spectacular, and um, so kudos to all of you and and uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for the being a part of the tribe. If you want to be more part of the tribe, go to Telegram, and I love everybody's comments. I'm sorry that I, I just haven't been available. I'm sorry that I'm not putting out more dream bots every day. I am saturated. I'm a point, point of saturation, but I still take care of myself. I still get good sleep. I'm not stressed out. I don't live in fear. And uh, next week, I've got my last week of certification for uh, something I'm extremely passionate about. And the more I do it, the more I believe in this um, method is is regression hypnotherapy. And so uh, it's an international certification. So it's, a, it's again, very intense. And um, we'll probably, we'll throw in a, well, we might do a live next week. So just be aware of that. Other than that, love all of you and have a great week. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye.